Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen video. I was contacted by Lorena of Steelform Pens from their Canadian offices in Quebec. She asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing one of their pens, the Steelform Aluminum. I said, yeah, of course, bring it on. She immediately sent me this one in black anodized aluminum. Those of you in the UK will be snickering about my pronunciation of aluminum, wanting me to say aluminium instead. Well, the Brits are well known for wanting to stick extra syllables and extra letters into as many words as possible. Is that what made Britain great and foodfully a needle of the Like color and neighbor. But we Canucks tend to bridge the gap between the UK and the US and use a mixture of both as we see fit. For example, we buy our plywood in four foot by eight foot sheets that are 19 millimeters thick. And there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing, nothing. Uh, could you tell us again what your argument is all about? This is not about diplomacy. This is about dignity. This is about respect. This is about realizing that humor is... <laughs> you guys are dicks! This very interesting steel form pen has a magnetic cap and a very nice titanium Bach nib. So I'll be using U.S. pronunciation of aluminum. Aluminum. Make sure you wrap that up with aluminum and the Canadian pronunciation of titanium. You guys are weird. Uh, what is that? That's a toque. Is one, it really? One syllable. Toque. Say it. Beanie. Unless the Brits want to stick an extra syllable into that word as well, making it titaninium. Right. What did he say? And just for you Canadians watching, I have a 10% discount code for you to purchase it from the Canadian Steel Farm website. So let's take a look right now. Contacted a couple of weeks ago by a representative of Steel Farm or steel form from the Canadian office in Quebec. They asked whether I'd be interested in reviewing one of their aluminum fountain pens. And I said, yes, of course. They asked what color and what nib I'd want. I said the blue with the medium nib. They were out of the blue, so they sent me the black. Um, I'll go over the details of this product when I do the review. But Stillform is a new company to me. They're based in Hamburg, Germany. And this is the Canadian outlet in Quebec that sent me this. They sent me a converter and a nib. And this is a Bach titanium nib. And I believe that's a medium. But that's a titanium nib. And here is the pen. This is German for uh, style and form. And since they're based in Hamburg, Germany, I would assume that that's what that means. Made in China. Okay, so at least they say on the outside, they're made in China. So designed in Germany, made in China. And the slip box opens up. And we have a pen wrapped in a bag. Feels like very soft material. Creativity begins with a pen. Flip me. Instructions on the bottom side. Okay, well, let's open the pen first. And here we go. Boy, this looks Lammy-like, doesn't it? Very, very Lammy-like. Lammy dialogue-like, only it's not a retractable pen at all. And it's flatted on both sides. Ah, uh, it's magnetic. There we go. So we got a magnetic cap. Yeah, it repels. So when you slip it on, if I try not to align up those flats, it will spin around because we're getting north to north, south to south, instead of north south, north south. Yeah, so it's flipped the whole box. On the back, put the nib in the section. Oh, I see there must be another part in that section. Just the nib orientation. Okay, so let's open this up. And there's another converter. Yeah, it's a screw in converter. Well, they sent me an extra converter. But this piece screws into the nib inside the section. So let's follow the instructions. And we're going to put the nib unit in the pen. And then we're going to screw it down. There we go. And then we're going to screw in the converter. And it's a nice upscale converter that you can take apart, 
to clean and maintain. I always like those better converters with the reinforced nipples and the screw thread that goes into the nozzle so that you're not making any mistake. It is absolutely tight inside that pen. And I think that allows us to adjust, yeah, where this lines up. Yeah, so if we want the nib to align, there we go. We want to align with the, with the writing on the flat there and just twist that whole thing around. And there we go. It becomes a bit of a fidget spinner. I'll show the parts and features of this pen, some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. The pen immediately reminded me of both the Pininfarina PF2, here it is, the review of which you can see by clicking right up here, and the Lamy Dialog CC. Now I don't have that one anymore because I sold it, but this is the Lamy Dialog 3, uh, but of course it's not. It's a fake Lamy Dialog 3, and it is a POS, or piece of crap. But you can see my review of the genuine Dialog CC up here. The steel form aluminum is much slimmer than both of those pens, and of course it's not retractable. And here it is with a Lamy Safari for scale. You can see that the steel form is slightly longer than the Lamy Safari, and those flatted sides feel very similar to the flatted size of the Safari. Almost the same size and shape except the Safari has a flat bottom and the steel form has this rounded bottom like the Dialogs. It is a metal pen and is close to 30 grams in weight, but is only 20 grams when it's uncapped. And the cap is magnetic, as you saw in the unboxing. And they've positioned the magnets in the cap. The magnets are actually back here in the cap. And they positioned them so that the poles repel when it's not aligned with those flats. And so if you try to push it on the wrong way, it just flips itself around. It makes it really nice to recap it. If you've got that on your desk and you're one-handed, you can just push it in there and lift it up and it recaps that pen. The pen has matching top and bottom rounded ends and the barrel and the cap are uniform thickness over its entire length. The only marking on the pen at all is on the one side of the flat part of the barrel where it says steel form in lowercase. The cap pulls off to reveal the long tapering anodized aluminum section that has a step up towards the number five size titanium and medium Bach nib and black plastic feed. As you saw in the unboxing, the nib unit screws into a removable collar at the back of the section. This design allows for three things. It keeps the ink from ever touch the inside of the section makes cleaning and maintenance much simpler and allows the nib unit to turn inside the section so you can keep it aligned with the flatted side and that branding on the top. This is excellent for those of us who suffer from OCAD, which is Obsessive Compulsive Alignment Disorder. The section is long enough to accommodate most grips and that step up to the barrel isn't sharp or obtrusive at all. Anodized aluminum sections can be quite slippery to the touch, but that small step up towards the nib and the step up to the barrel make good purchase points for your fingers and I haven't found this pen difficult to manipulate at all. Let's look closer at this nib. It is a typical Bach nib with the Bach logo, Bach and Titan for titanium. The nib size is not indicated anywhere on the nib, but this one is a medium. The section unscrews to reveal the included standard international converter, which is branded steel form on the collar and is the threaded screw in type. And here you can see how that nib unit turns inside that section. It is an upscale converter that can be disassembled for easy cleaning. You just unscrew it here at the collar and it has a reinforced nipple. The barrel will accommodate two standard international short cartridges, one in the section and one as a spare in the barrel. The barrel and section threads have one start point so that you can align your nib with that label. You don't have to open the pen to do that alignment. You can just grab the nib and give it a turn to line that label up. And because this nib is full of ink, 
I'm using a tissue. There we go. Now it's lined up. The inside of the cap shows a metal cap liner and the polarity aligned magnets that close the cap to the top of the section. The cap does not post at all, but unposted, the pen is nicely balanced and comfortable in the hand. The steel form aluminum comes in five colors, night sky blue, aurora green, rose moon pink, warp black, and comet gray. It has four nib options, E, F, F, M, and B for broad, available in four metals, chrome steel, black steel, titanium, and 14 karat gold. The steel nib version of this pen retails for $118.95 US, the titanium for $203.35, and the gold is $308.05 US. Optional accessories include a clip in either black or chrome for 16 bucks, a pen base in either aluminum for $22 or titanium for $54 US, and the aluminum base can be either black or silver. Check out the Steelform website for their other writing instruments. They have some very interesting looking ball points, roller balls, and graphite and eternal pencils. I'll put a link to both the Steelform Canadian website and the international one in the description below. Viewers in Canada can purchase from the Canadian website using the code DOUGLAS10 to get 10% off your purchase. It's only for a limited time, I'm not sure how long, but at least a month from the posting of this review. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Steelform Aluminum Fountain Pen in black with a Pininfarina PF2, a Peniter Modern Times, a Visconti Mythos Apollo, and a fake Lamy Dialogue 3. The Pininfarina, Peniter, and Visconti all have magnetic cap closures as well. And the fake Lamy Dialogue 3 is really a piece of crap, so don't even think about spending money on it. I include it here just to show what the size and shape of a true Lamy Dialog 3 would look like compared to the others. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Of course the steel form and the fake Lamy don't post, the Pin Eider and the Pin Inferina don't post well, and the Visconti kind of rattles around when it's posted. And now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the, sorry, the pen was open for a while, so it dried out. It's running now. This is the steel form aluminum or aluminium, if you want to add extra letters. And it has a number five size, Bach titanium. or titanium, if you prefer, or titaninium, if you really prefer, medium nib. Let's check the wetness. This is really nice and wet, and it is, oh my God, so smooth. I love the wetness of this nib. It's got just a touch of, uh, what would you call it? Titanium feedback, I guess we'll call it, because it's, uh, it's that titanium goodness. If you've ever tried a titanium nib, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like graphite on vellum. You drafts people will know what I'm talking about. Just a touch of drag, which is just lovely. And the ink today is quickly becoming my favorite go-to black ink. It is J. Urbain or Jack Herbin, if you like, Shogun. That was me missing the page. It's not easy to write over the camera like this. And this Shogun has a really nice uh, coppery kind of pink rose shimmer to it. If you have a nib that flows ink as well as this Bach does, then the Shogun really shines. As to line variation, well, Lorena told me that not to expect any line variation or flex from this nib, but I'm, especially from a small nib, I'm surprised by the look at the amount of bounce I'm getting. I'm going to close up on that. Look at the amount of bounce I'm getting out of that nib. It's very, very nice. And this nib makes 
a 0 0.6 millimeter line which is a western you guessed it medium or a japanese medium broad on my richard bender line width chart which you can find linked in the description below and for our quote And for some reverse writing, it's uh, not scratchy, but there's a lot more drag. It feels just like an H pencil on a piece of paper, and it dries out quickly, but something that you can sketch with in a pinch. And for some quick writing, no issues whatsoever. This pen is nicely wet and fast. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, you might know that I'm not fond of metal pens with metal sections, or pens that don't post, or have no clips, or have number five size nibs. But, <laughs> funny thing is, I love this fountain pen. Let's start with the best bits of this pen. The nib, the nib, the nib, and the nib. I've had some bad experiences with Bach nibs, but this one has to be the best Bach I've ever used. It's buttery smooth and wet, but has that touch of drag on the paper with a slight feeling of graphite on vellum. Those of you who have tried titanium nibs will know what I mean, as will you draftspersons. It's hard to describe. You have to experience it to know. And then there's the design of the pen itself. It's so German. Elegant, simple, and beautifully engineered. Anodized aluminum is always cool to the touch when you first hold it, but it warms up in the hand very, very quickly. Writing with this pen is just wonderful. I like the excellent screw-in converter that is included with the pen. I don't mind that the pen doesn't post, and I kind of racked my brain to figure out a way that this cap might post securely and deeply, but I can't, and it doesn't matter. I do think they should include the removable clip with this pen at this price point, however. And I do want a clip, so I went to the Canadian Steel Forum website and bought a clip for it. And while I was there, I bought the black aluminum base as well. And I gave myself 10% off by using the code DOUGLAS10 at checkout. I was thinking of putting this pen into a giveaway for subscribers, but I love it so much that I'm going to keep it instead. I gave away a Laban 325 a while ago, and I still regret it. That was a nice pen. So, get your own steel form aluminum, and if you're a Canuck, use my code and get 10% off. If you're not a Canuck, get your own code. So there. Thanks go out to Lorena of Steel Form Pens in Dorval, Quebec, for providing this pen for review and to keep. This is mine. What's that? This is mine. <laughs> What's that, Basil? And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section. You'll get cool emojis, badges, sneak peek unboxing videos, as well as instant access to my videos when I post them. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you. for watching and that's all she wrote I made this how is it it's great see there you go the reviews are in